What's growing on, gardeners? It's Sunday, December 24th, and it is a beautiful early winter day here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. On today's video, I'm going to share with you a relatively new variety of citrus that has the potential to rescue Florida's dying citrus industry. And as a benefit, it is super cold hardy, cold hardy enough for me to grow here in ground in North Carolina, and I think it can survive and thrive in points much further north too. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon store and spread shop links in the video description for everything I use in my garden and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. Some of you may be shocked to know that Florida's citrus industry is dying. In fact, it is barely hanging on by a thread and that is because of a relatively new disease called Huang Long Bing or what we call citrus greening disease. Citrus greening disease is spread by the Asian citrus psyllid. It is a bacterial infection that is transmitted by the bug when it bites into either the fruit or the plant itself. The bacterial infection causes yellow mottling of the leaves, premature defoliation, stem dieback, and eventually death of the entire plant itself. It was first documented in China back in the 1800s, but with international trade being what they are these days, it was only a matter of time until some of these bugs would stow away on a ship somewhere and find their way to the United States. And that is exactly what happened. In 2005, the disease was first detected in Florida, and then a perfect storm of disaster happened. Citrus is not native to North America. The overwhelming majority of citrus is native to the subtropical highlands of Asia. So when citrus eventually made its way over to the United States, Florida was the perfect climate to accommodate the growing conditions of citrus. It just loved growing there. And because it was a non native species for a long period of time it was basically growing in a clean room environment so what did Florida farmers do they cleared out huge amounts of land and grew all of these citrus and high density in perfectly straight rows so eventually when nature finds a way over here what did the Asian citrus psyllid find but a bonanza of completely unprotected citrus groves that were ripe for the taking so when the bug struck it absolutely decimated the industry you can see the devastation of citrus greening firsthand simply by looking at an aerial satellite view of Florida, finding some old citrus groves, and then dropping a pin on Google Maps and going back from the 2008 original Google Street View imagery and then look at these citrus fields now. In many cases, they are completely gone. And a lot of people have asked the question, why has Florida's landscape changed so dramatically? Well, that's because all of these generations old citrus farms that were hundreds and thousands of acres are are basically worthless now and the farmers have sold them off for their land value and they're just building homes and developments and strip malls in the place and this is all happening because of citrus greening it is completely devastated the citrus industry in Florida so as crazy as it sounds it's actually easier to grow citrus here in North Carolina than it is in Florida these days because we don't have the climate or the citrus groves that would support the populations of the Asian citrus psyllid that is why I'm so excited to to make this video today because the University of Florida has developed one of the only known varieties of citrus that is tolerant of citrus greening and there has been tremendous success growing it so far in Florida and it may be the answer to the citrus industry woes. Now there are no known cures for citrus greening. There aren't even any known effective treatments. Organic citrus grown commercially is now impossible in Florida and you pretty much have to inject all of the trees with a systemic insecticide in order to get more years out of them. So I'm hoping this revolutionary new variety can help fix this issue. This incredible new variety is called the Sugar Bell. Now this Sugar Bell is a hybrid cross between a Tangelo and a Clementine. And for those of you that don't know, a Tangelo is a cross between either a Mandarin Orange or a Tangerine and a Pomelo or a Grapefruit. So the goal was to basically take a Tangelo and then cross it so it would have a better deep orange color. And because there is Mandarin and Clementine in the lineage, it is actually very cold hardy. The amazing thing about this tree is a lot of gardeners are starting to think this is about as cold hardy as a satsuma. So we're talking cold tolerance into maybe the mid-teens, maybe even lower. As you can see, it's thriving here in North Carolina, and this is planted against the north wall of my house. 
full exposure to the north wind and it is thriving. Now when it gets really cold, I've protected this the same way as I've protected the citrus in my rear property with incandescent lights, but I'm not able to fit C9s on this yet because it's too small. I only have mini lights on it and I can't put a pickle barrel in front of this because it would look terrible in the front of my house. So I'm just using a five gallon Lowe's bucket full of water and it has sailed through two winters so far here. This tree is about two years old right now and I can't wait to take you in for a closer look on the fruit. Now, as I said, this variety was developed by the University of Florida, and initial trials show it to be very tolerant of citrus greening. Not immune, but tolerant. So a lot of citrus growers have been replacing their old dying fields with this variety, and they're seeing huge improvements. Aerial views that show old dead citrus fields that were killed off by greening compared to these new fields are just breathtaking. It really is amazing. And of course, this tree was given to me by Stan the Citrus Man, Stan McKenzie, from McKenzie Farms in Scranton, South Carolina. So he wanted me to trial this up here to see how it does. So he told me he does have a few of these grafted and ready to go on trifoliate rootstock if you want to be a brave early adopter as well. So you can see what these citrus looks like right here. This looks like a tangelo by the way it kind of comes to a point but it's not zipper skinned like a satsuma. It looks absolutely beautiful, just great color. And this is its first full year in ground. I planted it the April before last. So it's been in ground for what, 20 months or so? And it's born four fruit to maturity. It did have more, but it dropped some. So it's great to see that it is precocious and I bet you next year I'm gonna have an even bigger haul. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick one of these sugar bells and I'm going to compare them side by side to my amazing Owari Satsuma tree because I think that will be a wonderful test as to how good these are. So right there we have my first ever sugar bell tangelo and it just looks beautiful. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to compare this one to one of my Owari Satsumas and I'm going to try to find one of about equal size and similar ripeness. And there you go right here. We have the Sugar Bell Tangelo right here and we have the Owari Satsuma here. So on my plate right here, I have two Satsumas from my Owari Satsuma tree looking beautiful. And then I have the Sugar Bell Tangelo here. So first I wanna give you a close up. And what you can see in this close up is that the Owari Satsuma has an inferior orange color to the Sugar Bell. The Sugar Bell is a lot darker orange. So right away, I like the looks of the Sugar Bell. Now, that being said, one of the awesome things about Satsumas in general is that they are zipper skinned. So you can take the bottom of a Satsuma, stick your finger in, and you can peel the entire orange no problem. And then they are all segmented. You can just break them into little individual wedges. We're not going to be able to do that with the Tangelo. However, it is supposed to be an easy peel skin. So it should peel more easily than say a navel orange. So now I want to take a cross section of the fruit and I'm going to start with a cross section of the Owari Satsuma. Now, when I planted my Owari Satsuma in ground, it was the only citrus on my property and it tended to be virtually seedless. However, now because it's cross-pollinating with other citrus, I usually get about three to five seeds in there. And you can see that right there. You can clearly see that there are about five seeds in that Owari Satsuma. Again, it's not a big deal. It doesn't affect the taste, but you do have to understand that you're going to get some seeds in your Satsuma if you're going to grow it alongside other citrus and they're going to cross-pollinate. Now, I don't know what to expect with this Sugar Bell variety. In my experience, a lot of times the hybrids can be seedier, but that's not necessarily the case. And remember, this is grown outside in my front yard in isolation. And this looks to be about exactly the same. I think there are about five seeds in there. So there is your side by side right there. You're getting the Owari Satsuma here and the Sugar Bell here. And what you will notice is how ridiculously juicy these are. Let me tell you that grocery store citrus is like a grocery store tomato. I never buy sweet citrus from the grocery store, but when you grow your own, absolutely incredible. So I'm going to cut the Sugar Bell into a wedge and I'm going to see if I can peel that wedge. So that's going to be our easy peel test. Mm. 
I would not call this easy to peel. At least I'm not a, a, a good citrus peeler anyway. Yeah, it's kind of, the skin is kind of breaking off. So I'm going to say not easy to peel. Consider this more like a navel orange. But let's eat the Owari side by side to the Tangelo. So I'll start with the Owari because the Owari Satsuma to me is the gold standard of what I can grow here in North Carolina. Mmm. I'm telling you, if you have never had fresh citrus off a tree, it is a revelation. It is magical. It is so sweet and so tangy. You have never had citrus that tastes like this. The stuff you get in the grocery store, th that may as well be considered swill. Mm. Every time I have a fresh Satsuma off my tree, I wonder how anything could be better than that. But now that my palate has been primed and I'm used to what that tastes like, I'm going to try this Sugar Bell. Wow. Okay, that is a completely different flavor. Whereas the Satsuma is very sweet, very sweet. This has more of a navel orange flavor to it. Wow. This is really good. If you like navel oranges, if you like caracaras, I think you would absolutely love the Sugar Bell. It has more of an acid punch than the Satsuma. Whereas your Satsuma is extremely sweet, this has more of that classic orange flavor. So once again, I'm going to go with the Satsuma. Mm, very sweet, almost like candy. And then the Sugar Bell strong, meaty. There is just a ton of flavor in that Sugar Bell. Now, I can't really say which one is better because they're so incredibly different. They really don't taste the same. It's almost like comparing a cherry tomato to a beefsteak tomato, whereas your Satsuma is more like the cherry tomato, where it is so bright and zippy and sweet, and you could just keep popping them like potato chips, whereas the Sugar Bell is like earthy and deep in flavor, more like a beefsteak tomato. It's almost rich tasting. I don't really think I have an answer to that question because they're so different. What do you like better, Satsumas or Navel Oranges? That's what it boils down to. And to me, if you were to have a tree of each, they are not at all redundant. You definitely need to have both of these because the flavor is just so different. I don't know about you, but I love side-by-side -side taste tests like that because only when you eat things one right after the other do you really get the dichotomy of flavors. When I first bit into my Owari Satsuma, it tasted so tangy. But then after eating that Sugar Bell, because it was so acidic and earthy, when I bit back into the Owari Satsuma, I could practically almost taste nothing but sugar because there was so much more zip, so much more kick in that Sugar Bell. So you you really have to ask yourself if you're debating which one is better for you. Do you like sweeter things or do you like really robust acidic things? Because they really tasted tremendously different and they were both delicious in their own right. Now I will say this, my Owari Satsuma is five years old. It is a mature established tree. So it is pumping out top quality fruit because the tree itself is mature. When the tree was young, it put out inferior fruit as young fruit trees often do. And every year it got better and better. So I'm comparing a mature Owari Satsuma that's producing fruit at the top of its game to something brand new that's never fruited before. So for that little tiny sugar bell tree to have fruit that is that complex in flavor and to taste that good, well, I think it's really going to be something amazingly special once it actually matures. That is an absolutely delicious fruit. So why did I take the time to make this video? awareness. I wanted to make this video for my Florida viewers that don't think they can grow citrus anymore. Well, you may want to try the Sugar Bell. For the commercial growers out there that are struggling, you may want to try the Sugar Bell. And for people in northern climates like mine where we think we can't really grow citrus, you may want to try the Sugar Bell. So that is yet another variety that is growable here in the Carolinas, and I'm sure further points north, you folks in Virginia Beach and the Chesapeake and Southern Oklahoma. The Sugar Bell is on the table. Same thing for you folks in the Pacific Northwest. It may take two seasons to ripen because sweet oranges need a lot of warmth in order to actually build sugar, but in terms of cold tolerance, you may be able to grow it there as well. So I really wanted to take the time and make this video so everybody knows exactly what's going on with Florida and how the citrus greening is devastating the industry and it threatens to spread. I've heard that they're starting to have some problems in Southern California with it. 
The only positive is that what I'm hearing is that in places with chilly winters, like you get on the West Coast, it is slowing down the disease. But we all need to be aware. This is why they have citrus quarantine states. It's in order to stop wood like this to spread from state to state to prevent disease spread. So I know it's frustrating, but it's just a reality, unfortunately. And again, if you're somebody that wants to be an early adopter of the Sugar Bell variety, they're still pretty hard to get. If you don't live in a citrus quarantine state, Stan McKenzie at McKenzie Farms in Scranton, South Carolina, he told me he does have some grafted that he will have ready to go. And I promised him I'd give him a heads up before I posted this video if anybody is interested in the variety. So give Stan a call, look him up on Google Maps. You can place a phone order and he will ship them to you. But I don't know how many he has. So if you're at all on the fence, consider this variety. And of course, if you're at all interested in growing citrus trees in your own backyard, I will make sure to drop a link down in the video description for a playlist of all of my cold protection techniques that shows you exactly how I grow so many citrus trees here in ground in North Carolina. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and please ring that notification bell so you're notified when I release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I use in real life in my garden, I will link to them all down in the video description in my Amazon storefront link. So expand the video description, click on the Amazon store link, and you'll see everything I use in real life. And while you're there, check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. Look at this mess right here. Does this boy not have it made? He's in his Christmas sweater on his Happy Holidays pillow under his specialty Dale blanket with his face all over it. Look at that, buddy. That guy on that blanket looks just like you. Dale is a little bit depressed because we have a really lousy day outside right now. We are getting hammered with rain. Actually, we have a little bit of break in the storm. Brett, we got to take Dale out to go potty. We have a break in the storm. We've had almost three inches of rain today.